Fedora server stays classy. Firefox done goofed. Spotify has officially snapped. And Plax tries on the Doom's hat. Oh, that's brilliant, because this is another day. <laughs> that is great. For Linux, yeah, I mixed it up on you just a little bit this week. All right, <laughs> let's go. Welcome back to Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, where we sit back and take that midweek break to talk about some of the fun things we found going on in Penguin Land. Linux Land, Linux Juice, I don't know, man. Those uh, things I saw in the Star Wars movie, Pedro, kind of look like <laughs> little penguins, but slightly more delicious. Yes, and there's a definite lack of beaks, but hey. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's been going on, man, before we jump into this uh, crazy week? Well, uh... The uh, the Christmas tree, as you can see behind me, uh, if you're watching the video version, is all set up. I had to turn off the lights while we were recording this because uh, they blink at a different frequency than the LEDs currently pointed at my face. Mm. So that was causing some camera rolling shutter issues. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. It's been a fascinating past two days because... You have to bear with us, ladies and gentlemen. We we have all types of technical. Our technical issues have technical issues right now, and yeah. we're, we're trying to work <laughs> through it because the, doing it live. Yeah, uh, this is how you learn. Um, no charter. Hey, PSA pro tip for everyone: if you're in the Athens area, uh, call me. Um, but outside of that, uh, they've went to 125, 124 megabits. That they're not going to tell you about like who are you talking about but I mean, if you hit them up it's on a christmas surprise <laughs> hit them up on online chat takes 20 seconds and they're like boop re they'll uh repartition your modem and uh you'll be good with it then you'll realize that even though you have 125 down they only give you five up that 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 sucks <laughs> yeah so that's been my day, then all the sound craziness. Let's just get right into it this week, man, because uh, Fedora has uh, done something that's not crazy, that's not insane, uh, and I would definitely say uh, they have did, did, did a solid on this by kind of backtracking yes. a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Uh, so uh, if you've been paying attention to the Fedora news, you probably know that Fedora Server 27 was supposed to come with the whole modularity thing. And that was going to be the case uh, up until the last beta, which also included the modularity thing. But they got a lot of negative feedback. So they decided, you know what, with this release, we're just going to roll back to the quote-unquote classic Fedora server and just push it out as usual. Nothing new there. It's basically the exact same thing as Fedora 26, only with the more up-to-date packages, as you'd expect. So that's good, and it was. I was reading through the modularity bit in the in the article, and I was like, okay, so if you're limiting software availability in a server distro, which you know this is Fedora server we're talking about, um, unless you really expect maintainers, packagers, developers to jump through a bunch of new hoops for the sake of that uh, modularity you're going to get a lot of negative feedback. And anyone who's ever packaged anything for a distro would be able to tell you that right off the bat. So, uh, yeah, man, that's definitely a thing. But what do you think with the whole module thing? It seems like something you would want to spend a lot more time testing than just, oh, it's a thing now. We have new package management and uh, mm -hmm. it's a really good idea, but it doesn't work yet. So go deploy it. <laughs> well, it is Fedora. I'm pretty sure uh, Red Hat themselves would never uh, do that, mm -hmm. at least not without a lot of testing and making sure that all the software that people run on those server-specific distros um, comes included, because that's the biggest issue here. If your software wasn't packaged for the whole modularity thing, you were boned. You could not, for the life of you, install your favorite what-have-you software on your server because the maintainers or the packagers or even the developers just hadn't jumped through all the hoops. And in the in the midst of the flat pack versus Snaps war, how do you get off on pushing out another packaging method? <laughs> hey, man, every distribution needs its own package format to help simplify the Linux ecosystem and... <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, simplify. <laughs> so check this business out. Putty be gone. Microsoft will ship an open SSH client. And um, this has gotten a lot of hate. A lot of hate. Everyone's <laughs> like, this is crazy. This is insane. This is wrong. And I'm just sitting back going, we're winning, guys. I, uh, come on. Um, it's definitely <laughs> one way to look at it because Renee in the show notes would he, yeah. he just kind of threw it as like yeah I mean, if you got to use windows 10 just install the Ubuntu, then you got your open ssh client as well yes i completely agree with him on that point but having it built into windows a native version that will hopefully just ship with windows to me sounds like one last thing i have to go install when i have to unbork a windows box on a rare occasion yeah that is true and I am one of those people that has to use Putty at work. And Putty is perfectly serviceable. It's a teeny tiny application, and all it does is just it's an open SSH client. It you can use to SSH into Linux boxes from Windows, and it hey, it works. And Microsoft being Microsoft, like uh MT already mentioned in Discord, they're going to find a way to screw this one up. You just know they will. <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I Listen, I've raged against Microsoft for decades. And when I see stuff like this, I, I still have hope. I ho hope that the part of Microsoft becoming a services company takes over from the smitey dicky part of mm -hmm. Microsoft that has done a litany of things, most of which we can't mention on this show because this is a family-friendly scenario. Mm -hmm. um, it's there. I don't see any harm with it. So on the rare occasion, yeah, there's no harm. Yeah. Well, it's you can the knee jerk reactions like, come on, Microsoft, you suck. What are you even doing that for, man? That's stupid. And the problem is, I completely understand that mentality 100%. Mm -hmm. The other part of me, the uh, pretend part that's a responsible <laughs> functioning adult. It's like it's it's a good thing they're doing stuff like this. We want more. We want to encourage this behavior. And I go, you're yeah. a big dumb dumb Microsoft. So, um, Thunderbolt three. It's thing terribly insecure. I don't think it is, but uh, somebody's trying to make it just a little bit better. Yeah. Uh, so, as you may know, there have been a bunch of articles lately saying that oh, USB security on Linux is a joke and this and that, and well. Christian Keller uh, is developing a teeny tiny daemon to address some of those security concerns, specifically for Thunderbolt. I 3. absolutely love. He's called, he called his you know, he's called his project Bold, not point one. Yes. Codenamed <laughs> accidentally working. <laughs> Admittedly, uh, yeah, he, he does have a sense of humor, uh, and basically he called it that because he wrote it, didn't expect it to work, but it did. And it did exactly what he wanted it to do for the first version. And you can go download it and try it out right now. Uh, it's still not ready for production. It's bound to cause issues with, say, you have one of those Thunderbolt docks that you use with your laptop to plug into external displays and to use an Ethernet cable if your laptop doesn't have it. Uh, people with Dell XPS 13s that use docks, mm -hmm. they know what I'm talking about. Um, but yeah, it's... Uh, it's good to see, uh, but I'm not entirely sure that adding one more layer on top of Dbus, which is already supposed to be the layer that gives you the inputs and a bunch of other stuff, but adding another layer on top of that to filter out all the Thunderbolt ins and outs, not entirely sure uh, it's a well, good I idea, mean, but it is for the sake of security. It's <laughs> You think, is Thunderbolt, Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt, show title... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> Thunderbolt Intel only, or? or? Uh, it is an Intel technology, yes. We, uh, I guess anyone could license it if mm -hmm. they wanted. Uh, but most motherboards that you see from like Ryzen uh, and the Threadripper uh, AMD motherboards, those usually have Type-C connectors, but they're just regular USB 3.1 Type-C. They're not Thunderbolt 3. The two have some uh, interoperability. If you plug in a Thunderbolt uh, dock to a Type-C connector, 
you may not get some of the functionality. Some of the display ports for external monitors might not work, mm -hmm. but like the USB pass through, the Ethernet pass through, all of that works just fine. So there is probably going to be some of this if uh, it ends up getting the adoption that, okay, to be fair, uh, I do hope it will get some adoption and it will be improved and they will find a much neater way to do it than not stacking something else on top of D-Bus. Probably a good idea. I mean, especially if it's shipping, you know, basically, what do you have? One, two, we have four default modes, none, DP only. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't For make that ports. Up. Yeah. <laughs> User and secure, that's usually nuped and secure by default, and especially if you're plugging things like network dongles, mm -hmm. um, I guess to a lesser extent, displays. Yeah, something out of the box controlled by at the user level. Yeah. To set permissions <laughs> on is a good idea, and it's good to see something in there like that. Um, this, this next bit, this next bit, <laughs> it's like... What, um, and by what, the <laughs> latest beta, Chrome 64, pop-up blocker, okay, but it's stronger. Uh, Site-wide audio muting and something about a window. I don't know about that, but mm -hmm. this is going to get rid of advertisements, advertisements that Google... Not all of them. Not Not all of them, but... But that's kind of the thing, though, man, is the ones that don't follow, what was it, the, uh, doop doo, -doo um, uh, as I furiously look around, oh, websites that display non-compliant ads according to the Google, it's a multi-company consortium, and they're like, these are bad ads. Yeah. So, it's the uh, acceptable ad policy, mm -hmm. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> and site-wide audio muting, to which I'm looking at people... This is what happens when autoplay video and junk like this becomes a norm. I'm looking right at you, CNET. You're one of the biggest offenders because that thing follows you down the page. I avoid CNET like the plague. And Well, that's just a good rule of thumb. It's full of malware, so did, did, just don't go to CNET. And it's doubly worse when you're on mobile. So, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> kind of interesting to see Google take this approach, but I, I think it's... It took them long enough. Very light-handed, but I think Google has the foresight to realize that like, if this goes completely unchecked, it is going to get to the point where everyone will be running an ad blocker, right? Yeah. Because yeah, you, absolutely. You're definitely forcing people into it, and I do want to give um to do all the evil Google overlords a little bit of credit. They got noped out of uh, the Windows Store today, or it might have been late mm -hmm. last night. Because if you want to be in the Windows Store for the Windows S version of Windows, you mm -hmm. they they got just a just ton of rules that you got to follow, and apparently one of them, if they're trying to go with Apple's things, you can't duplicate functionality. If you're going to use uh, build a web browser, it has to be based on Edge internals, the mm -hmm. rendering engine. Mm -hmm. And Google's like, yeah, yeah, yeah well, we totes did that. It was just a link that downloaded Chrome. Yep. It's like, <laughs> Good on you, buddy. <laughs> so Microsoft stomped, his, and then they walked over to Edge, and like, I'm going to make them love you. And uh, th that'll never happen. Microsoft, quit developing that piece of note. No one wants it, not even your own customers. It's definitely a thing. But we're not done talking about browsers, Pedro. No, no, we're not. And uh, the one, the other big player... Uh, that we have been quiet about up until this point has also found a way to poop the bed over the past week. Uh, Mozilla's Mr. Robot promo backfires after it installs a Firefox extension without permission. Yeah, that article title says it all. So uh, you probably saw this, uh, especially if you're on Reddit. Uh, Looking Glass uh, was a... It still is. It still exists. It's just not installed without your permission anymore. Uh, it's an extension that creates a sort of uh, an augmented reality ARG game um, for fans of the Mr. Robot show. And Mr. Robot, it's a watchable show. I wouldn't say it's my favorite, but uh, I don't. Um, I'm not opposed to watching it. Uh, and 
if you were paying attention to season three, you would have noticed some things happening when they show the computer screens and some of the lines that the characters deliver. And this extension, what it does supposedly is to bring that ARG to your browser. So you could experience some of that and maybe find a mystery behind it and all that. That's uh, the base concept of that is all very well and good. And them sneaking this into the browser without telling people about it still fits with the theme but that's not something you do, because what you did is you introduced adware to people's boxes, True. whether or not it and was disabled by default. Regardless, that, that's what it boils down to, is reading their explanation, like, hey, we didn't do this for money, and mm -hmm. this wasn't, we were trying to hurt it even. We were acting like a much smaller company than we actually are, because we are the Mozilla mm -hmm. Corporation, and with that type of footprint, you know, comes certain responsibilities, um, great power and great responsibilities and all that. And I can understand you know, reading what you would call their non-apologies, you said, is mm -hmm. they, they explained it. And I get it. But this the, the reason for me it's bad, not because I think it's malicious anyway. They were just having was like, oh, man, these guys, uh, Mr. Robot, it's a big hit. People like it. And they've been, you know, really on point with trying to do their best with drama mm -hmm. and technology and throw in some love Mozilla's way. But holy hell, Mozilla, you should have known better than to push anything minus security <laughs> updates to the end user without big red blinking tags and fire and stuff. Because people, the average person does not want to know that that's even a possibility. That's a really good way to get people running over and don't make apologies for this. Cause I've already seen some Firefox. Um, we, we use Firefox. We use Vivaldi. We use mm -hmm. Chromium. We use everything here. Cause I don't like that tribal team mentality stuff. And but I'm not going to defend them on this. Uh, again, I don't think it was a malicious, uh, learning, learning mistake. I don't think here, here's the, here's the positive side Pedro. I don't think they'll ever do anything like this again. Oh no. <laughs> Uh, and my biggest gripe with it wasn't actually the thing uh, itself, because yes, they done goofed, but they reverted it. And uh, oh, I well, guess we should say I think um, Trugs and a couple of people in uh, chat realm, yeah, it was like, hey, yeah, on Linux, we didn't even experience it. So yeah, but a lot of people did. Uh, apparently, some people even did. If you were paying attention to the Reddit's. But uh, on December 18th, that was this Monday, uh, they put out an update, Mozilla did, saying, um, we're sorry for letting you down, letting us down. So you're not apologizing for pushing hardware or adware uh, on your users without asking for permission, not giving anyone the choice to opt in or opt out, not giving people a bit of a heads up at all. No, ladies and gentlemen, Mozilla is sorry uh, for the confusion and for letting down members of their community. Really? Really? That's the best you could come up with? Listen, man, if it was me, I would have been like, my bad, period. That, that, <laughs> that, uh, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> so like, We're yeah. really sorry we did this. That would have been a much better apology than whatever the hell this blog Listen, post man, is. you got to explain. Try to explain. I understand their explanation. I'm not going to give them a hard time for it because it's one of those things. I do believe they went, ooh, right. That was a dumb idea. There's there, that, pro, that dumb idea has probably created a policy inside the Mozilla Corporation. Mm -hmm. This is good. And to the best I know, no one exploded. And um, <laughs> there is that. So one thing we love on Linux is DRM <laughs> encryption. We can't get enough of it. We're begging for it and they can't bring it to us quick enough. But a lot of people do in all seriousness, uh, flip the genuine, you know what out, uh, when you talk about it, but we're going to talk about HDCP and why it isn't the end of the world, man. And Indeed. Like personally to me, HDCP is basically the TSA equivalent of DRM. <laughs> it, it's security theater. If I'm being kind, uh, and the biggest problem, the, the, the biggest crime HDCP sets up is when you try to use it and it doesn't work right on systems mm -hmm. that are supposed to support it. But 
Uh, it kind of brings up some points with, you know, the encryption is on the outside here. The DRM's on the, uh, it's not necessarily inside the Linux. No, it is. Uh, the way that this works is basically you have a DRM module in your system and let's say you're playing some DRM content. Now on Windows, that's always been the case. If you went to Netflix, for instance, it wouldn't actually render on the GPU. It would that picture would be created on that DRM module and that would be pushed to the GPU and then to your display. But it would be all encrypted. So even if you tried to take a screenshot of that, if you didn't have any sort of compositing going on, you wouldn't see anything. There would just be a blank window. Uh, well, that's not really an issue on Linux because everyone is running some sort of uh, GLX compositing nowadays. And you can, if you take a screenshot of the topmost layer of your display at any point, you're going to see that, whether it's DRM'd or not. So if you aim a screen recorder at that, you can pirate the heck out of some HDCP encrypted stuff. And if this, to me, is fine, because again, it's purely superficial, it's purely there to give people in the industry a sense of security, especially the people who own the proprietary content. And if this means that we get some 4K Netflix or 4K Amazon Prime on Linux, you, then you're just being picky, positive. man. Is, is UHD <laughs> 4K is not a real thing? Um, UHD Netflix worth selling your soul to the man, Pedro? Is that what you mm -hmm. want? You, you want to give up my <laughs> principles and my freedoms as I run off and play DRM games on Steam on Linux because I drew an imaginary <laughs> yeah. line in the sand so I wouldn't make myself out to be the hypocrite that I am? See, I am a hypocrite, but I've always owned up to my hypocrisy, and I usually specifically point it out whenever I'm doing it. But I'm, I can't be that hypocrite here, because look, it's more stuff coming to Linux. That means more adoption, more developer adoption, more awareness of Linux as a viable platform. That's a good thing, okay? And this one isn't particularly draconian as far as DRM goes. This is fine. All DRM is bad, which I'll agree with, but... Yeah, at the most elementary level, yes, it is. Taking away your freedoms. It at, is freedom. It know. has to be cracked. And that's why you have DMC loopholes and stuff like that. And mm -hmm. again, it, this, this doesn't do anything in the first place. So last yeah. week we were talking about, <laughs> you know, UHD Blu-rays. That's already been blown apart. So... I'm not really mm -hmm. worried about your little cable, Brad. I mean, this is all to make yeah. somebody in the food chain feel like our stuff's secure. See, now we can send it. Listen, anybody wants to get it, has got it. End of story. Yeah. But maybe you want to make some content so people can steal it. Ooh. And to do that, you might want to try out 1712 Not of Katie in Live. Not much really going on here, if we're going to be uh, kind of honest about it. But, uh, uh, how, how would you say this? Uh, the, I don't want to call it, it's not really a maintenance thing. They're busy refactoring right now. So mm -hmm. we don't have a ton of stuff that is coming through. Uh, as I furiously look there, uh, maintenance release is what we have. This is focused on stability. KDE has been doing a big push for that and it's nice. I'm using KDE in live currently. Finally. Um, Proxy clips, they've been given some attention, a little bit of love. Haven't noticed anything necessarily wrong with them. But uh, they do claim that will provide a better seeking experience, F all what that means, and uh, reduced memory image u well, usage for images. If I mm -hmm. didn't think that could ever be a problem. But if you want to try this, they do have an app image, which is the right yes. image. Um <laughs> Go give it a try. I haven't. I'm just using whatever's shipping with the 1710 repo because i old school, not broke, don't fix, and yeah. which is really, really hard for me to do. It's how I'm learning self control. Uh, now, the only, the only thing I really wish I'd li I'd like to see a focus on is with an eight core, sixteen threaded part, and it doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's Ryzen, Intel, or whatever. Uh, Melt, uh, MTL, uh, MLT. If it could take full advantage of that, that'd be great. And yes, I understand. It's like, well, that responsibility is pretty much up to the plugin authors, not taking. It's like, okay, just get, it'd be nice, man, because it's only about half tilt when 
were rendering mm -hmm. out the shows. And I, I'm thinking the entire time going, man, I could wait half that time if you could utilize <laughs> everything I was throwing at you, man. Yeah. And uh, they do have an important notice uh, in the announcement, uh, which they picked a green font on top of a lighter green background. That's not a good idea. But they say that packagers must take note that Lib's sample rate is now a dependency due to the recent changes in FFmpeg. And they actively recommend that uh, anyone using Ubuntu and derivatives to use the app image until further notice. Apparently, there's some issue with the uh, this current release on the PPA, on whatever you're using. So use the app image instead. All right. Yeah. Good times. Uh, to making movies, to listening to music. This kind of is like, wait, what? Yeah. what's going on here? Spotify gives Linux users an early Christmas present. Did I finally get my Model 3 that I probably won't see for another year? No. A new desktop no. client. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's Spotify. You know what it is. Uh, chances are most of you are probably or probably have it installed uh, right now. And, well, uh, if you've been using it, you know that it hasn't been great. And uh, I remember the first few versions that they weren't really uh, Linux versions. But, well, if we're being honest, neither is this one. Uh, but it is a new and updated uh, client. Uh, they say... What did I say? It's launching now in their own Snap. Spotify has ensured that their users in the Linux ecosystem are now able to enjoy the latest version of their leading mu music streaming application as soon as it's released, regardless of which distribution they're, they're using. Assuming, of course, your distribution runs Snaps, which it should, because it is supposed to be a universal package. Mm -hmm. So it's, yeah, it's Spotify. I don't think I need to tell you just how big that is <laughs> you, you would have to tell me i mean listen technically i know what spotify is now i said really good to see them coming back to linux because it's been a few years and they, they had a mm -hmm. very antiquated client and um you said it's snap but snap goes where you really want it if you're forceful with it yeah and you said, uh, I, I was kind of curious because admittedly, my first thought was like, oh, great. It's a Chromium browser that's pretending to be an app, also known as Electron. But it's not, is it? It's, uh, it, it is still a Chromium window that's pretending to be an app, but it's not Electron. It's the Chromium embedded framework. Uh, if you download, uh, if you go to their repo right now and download the deb, you can just open it up and you'll see, oh, look, a bunch of Ceph files. Yep. There we go. Hmm. <laughs> so... Same smell, different chromium derivative. If I'm listening to music, it, be it anything, I just don't do it on the desktop. I haven't listened to music on a desktop since they said, hey, man, we, we can make your mobile play music. That it If you're working at your desktop and you have headphones and you could just put the window away somewhere, that's that's fine. <laughs> See, I can't do that because if I got the headphones on, that means I can cut it up and no one can hear me. And I might be in an office environment. I'd be rocking that out, man, and you know, then get lighters out and all that fun stuff. And it might raise questions. But on that same vein, uh, maybe Spotify is not your thing. Maybe you a little more adventurous. You like going out and looking for that live, live audio mm -hmm. that never messes up on the internet. It's always one hundred percent crystal clear, and no one has ever had the problems with it in the history of ever. And if, mm -hmm. if that's the case, yep. Gradio 7.0 is out. It's ready for you, man. A uh, couple of new things in here. They have a new unified library. That's kind of cool. And uh, new first launch experience. So it'll explain to you just what the gosh darn heck it is. Redesign mm -hmm. toolbar. I mean, just a lot of UI stuff and performance memory and a ton of translations. So internet radio. Uh that, that that's still a thing apparently I, is what i said yeah <laughs> see uh i used to back in my windows days i actually created a little gadget that played all the portuguese radios i think the website is even still up uh it was one of those free weebly websites uh and basically all it did was it took the mms or the m3us or the whatever streams mm -hmm. and would just play them. Uh, Windows comes built in with Windows Media Player and there's a little 
portion of it that's always running in the background, and you could just use that to play those streams with a seamless, quote-unquote, desktop experience. You just had to have the uh, the gadget on the on wherever you wanted it on the screen. And the moment I started using Linux and I figured out that, oh, look, there's a little thing called Radio Tray, which did basically the exact same thing, but it just put an icon on the tray. It's like, oh, it's hidden right there. Oh, and it's still playing music just fine. The co getting codecs for those uh, Microsoft-specific streams was a bit of a pain, but less and less people are using those now, and most of what you have to deal with nowadays are people still using the old streaming servers that still use that Microsoft co codec or use Silverlight or something like that. You still got things like that. I mean, audio, I, I think a lot of the radio streaming that you're seeing right now is talk, podcast, stuff like that. Yeah. You know, you rewind five or six years ago, uh, internet radio was kind of a big thing because you could basically just stream anything you wanted. Then mm -hmm. the tax collectors at B said, nope, we need a certain amount of cut of all that. And effectively overnight killed that industry because there were a ton of good stations. And I mean, they mm -hmm. went to the point of having DJs and all that. And yeah, I used to listen to stuff way back when on real player on Linux in like 1996, 1997, you can get all up off my lawn with your windows media streaming <laughs> junk. And, uh, again, this is not something I've done for at least six years or whenever the first Android slide phone thing came and I was like, yep, this is it. And now you have Bluetooth and I got Sonos and yeah. you get Google. I was like, Google, play me some typo negative. Google's on it, done. And, yep. you know, I can finally sit back and pay more attention to my knitting. But yeah, it's, it's radio. It, it basically the gist of it is they took the radio bits, the internet radio bits from say Rhythmbox or VLC, and made it its own application. So if that's all the media consumption that you do from Rhythmbox or VLC, why are using VLC to play just audio is beyond me. But hey, uh, hey man, uh, you now have radio. That's cool, and we we do have an audio only stream in Discord, kind of, sort of. I mean, it works technically. Or you mm -hmm. can listen to us in real time if you don't want to watch video, which is probably a good idea because we're, we're some pretty horrible looking people. Um, from audio to video, VLC three not not RC one posted by Poopy. You know him, you love him. Yeah. He's here in Discord with us, probably watching right now. We'll find out in about mm -hmm. ten to fifteen seconds. <laughs> Why are, why are we talking about this release candidate? Because, uh, check this out. It's got a little bit of extra magic in it's it. It's a snap. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Oh, snap VLC. It's there for your testing. Uh, they've tested the playback with GPU accelerated video, modern systems, VDPAU. And that's definitely, they're looking for the feedback. Now, installing this piece of cake, snap install VLC candidate. Mm -hmm. I still got to learn my snap commands, but... But I kind of want to throw out a little bit of free advice, Pedro. A little bit of marketing. Okay. A little bit. Uh, is a uh, pro tip, if you will, he said, non-ironically. Uh, <laughs> you might just maybe do it like on an alternate Tuesday after 4 p.m. Uh, consider letting people know what's in the new release candidate to go test. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Uh, I guess the only excuse I could make for Popey in this case is that um, they're not actually the ones working on VLC so they basically just pulled the RC uh, binaries or oh, the yeah, source no, code no, no, and absolutely. put them in a snap. They're 100% the right mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm just saying you gotta sell it a little bit. You gotta put the hat on dance around and be like hey come look at this stuff and because um, here's I, I didn't test this mainly because here's my thought process I don't know what's new in this it's like, wait a minute, have we installed the snap from the command line before? Yes, we have. Next. That was... um. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, the only thing right now uh, that uh, really grinds my gears with snaps is that stupid folder it puts in your home folder, which is lowercase snaps. That's it. And it's just... I, I, I implore like to keep my home whoever is in charge of keeping it that way, please do, because it... 
annoys Pedro, and that makes me happy. Yes, it does. <laughs> so I, I'll usually play around with the snap for a little bit, and then I'll see, oh, that's that stupid folder again. I will nuke the snap and then nuke the folder. Just get rid of it. Okay? Snap's cool, man. I mean, it's all going to be interchangeable in five years one way or the other, but good to see progress, good to see something up and working, and you can take snaps to basically anywhere else you want to go. It's a good mm-hmm. idea. Now... The complete opposite of a good idea is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We're talking about Plex Amp from Plex Labs. Yes, Plex, you know, the uh, the media server that we all use it for that one thing that we don't talk about, uh, that thing. They yeah. got a Plex Labs. It's a place where you can, it's their skunk works, man. You know, it's their Google Xs. But they're talking about a new piece of kit that they're working on and it is called plex amp and it's available for download it's thing that what they want to do is basically create a winamp replacement which Mm -hmm. initially come on obey me there we go uh (laughs) sounds like a good idea sounds like a really good idea right until you think that there's already a bunch of those on linux well there is but to replace the original winamp Something that works perfectly and might eat up half a meg of RAM and Mm -hmm. hasn't really been updated in two decades, but or 16 years maybe. But it still (laughs) really whips the llama's ass, even today, on a modern system. And again, it plays Mm -hmm. MP3s. So Plex, they're rolling out their own thing. I just threw this in the notes to give them a hard time. Here's why I did it. We're not really going to go into it and go over it too much. Other than that, that's the point of it. If you want it, it's going to be in the show notes like everything else. Go check it out. They are excited. They're trying to sell this. They were excited to use new technologies to bring this player uh, new features and all this other wizarding. They're using Electron. (laughs) They're using Electron and and get this. Bury yourself. Not available for Linux. <laughs> what that, the hell? <laughs> that is next level. You, you, you're using something basically built to make things beyond easy to be cross-platform. Like, yeah, not on Linux, friend. Yeah. But you're going to, you made an Electron app for Windows. Do you understand? Bad plex. So you made an Electron uh, implementation of Winamp, and you're just going to say, nah, it's not on Linux because we can't be asked? I don't know. Plex, the Plex server works great on <laughs> Linux. The Plex, I remember yeah. installing that the first time. I was like, ooh, this is going to be a weekend project. Ten minutes later, I was like watching a Linux <laughs> ISO that I downloaded. Um, mm-hmm. the, the, uh, the Plex web player works great on Linux. What the hell? <laughs> But hey, that does make me wonder, is XMMS still being developed? I assume it is. Is it? I don't know. Uh, it still looks the same, though. Yeah, <laughs> well, that's the old thing. There's a reason, man. If you look at a hammer from a millennia ago, it looks like a hammer, Pedro. And you know what? Uh, There's yeah. some developers out there that would do good. Would do good to adopt that philosophy. and yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you would also do good to join one of the billions of people. I think there's like a hundred people helping support <laughs> this show, keeping us ad free because we don't do a bunch of ads. And by a bunch, I mean none. It's pretty simple. You can join us at patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. We have a gang of Amazon affiliate links from Britannia, uh, mm. North America, Canada, Canada's hat or hats, Canada or something, Space France, and <laughs> Deutschland, Amazon. Wish list. We got a couple of things on there, but <laughs> some big ticket mm-hmm. items, man. You would have to have something wrong with you. Like Maddie. Thank you, Maddie. Maddie picked Maddie. us up at Euphoria last night because I messed up. <laughs> and <laughs> apparently if I, this is, was after the stream. There was no shilling going on yep. here. This was like, yeah, that Euphoria is next on the list because that's really going to jack me up for like a week trying to figure out how to get all that sorted. And it's, 
an IRC mat. He's like, yeah, I wasn't even really drunk this time when I, because <laughs> Matt, Matty hooked us up, Matt High 19, uh, the Matt High power supply that's currently powering our box of business, bringing you mm-hmm. this nonsense. Um, New Egg affiliate links. We've got some one-time PayPal donate o buttons. They are there. Um, oh, I did add something. I added, we have Bitcoin. Bitcoin's going to die tomorrow, so let us spend it for you. Also added Bitcoin Cash, because apparently that's a thing now. I don't know. It was trending. I didn't have anything to do last night. I couldn't go to bed. Don't judge mm-hmm. me. That is up there. But yeah, we got some uh, new party patrons we need to thank this week. Oh, yeah. So we're up to 107. And uh, joining uh, <laughs> joining the ranks are Dr. Hack, Waldo, we found him, uh, Massive Uni, Adam Stambaugh, uh, Dan W and Trugs who helped this pledge. Thank you very much, Trugs and Dan W. Not being content with just already being an awesome, fiscally irresponsible person uh, and supporting us on Patreon, we decided to go to the uh, the Wish Zone and um, get you a little something, didn't even? Oh yeah, and somebody's already giving some static about it. We can go back and watch last night's live stream if you want some of that nonsense. But there it is, right here. Sound blaster. Ooh. It's around. But um, this was needed for the chain. It's going to be adopted in. But you do get to send a little note, which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. I actually save all these because I'm sentimental. It's e- <laughs> either that or it's just really creepy. I haven't figured out which one it is. But um, Dan writes, he's a uh, Christmas bonus was pretty good this year. Wanted to finally give something back as a thank you for what you do. Have some more complexity for the audio noodles to sort out. And that's what that's the type of threats I like to hear. It's uh I even took a hot second to show you uh this business in action. Let's take a look. Ooh. Boop. There it is right now. Oh, there it is. <laughs> it's uh Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's a thing. That's part of our audio chain. Soon to be in bigified. And oh, make sure you have that. Uh, all of your audio noodles facing down so the sound can leak mm-hmm. out. You're, you don't want to have to force yes. it. That's a, and it leaks onto the wire so it, you don't lose any of it. <laughs> that too, man. So, before we get out of here, uh, it's Christmas time, so we got some Christmas pies. Indeed. To bring this week. What's <laughs> up first? Up first, we have the free C-STEM Studio as curriculum for Raspberry Pi, Arduino, and Lego Mindstorms. Man, I had one kit of Lego Mindstorms, and I could never get it to work properly. <laughs> uh, but this is the, uh, this is actually a uh, free uh, course that you get from the University of California, uh, from the Davis C-STEM Center. Uh, and they've updated their um, free STEM platform for grades K-14. And version 4... Uh, also brings the CSTEM, uh, CSTEM Studio update, uh, which is available for Windows and Mac. And if you want to play with it on Linux, well, you got to use a Raspberry Pi because that's the only Linux version that they have. Uh, but yeah, it is at least available on Linux and they have their own custom Raspberry Pi uh, Raspbian respin. So that's good. Mm-hmm. No, it's always good to see. I mean, because, I mean, things have changed. You don't really have shop class, and so we need Raspberry Pi. We mm-hmm. need maker class. It doesn't matter if you... Yeah. yeah it doesn't matter what you're doing as long as you're working with your hands, learning some new cool things. And, uh, yeah, that just makes me happy because getting kids into... that, that, that That's when you got to hook them. And uh, mm-hmm. you had connects. Get, the, get that young mind firing at all the synapses and put a Raspberry Pi in front of him, say, you can do whatever you want with this. I, Just don't put it in your mouth. I can't think That's about that to too much because <laughs> then I instantly, instantly go to, like, being wicked jelly. It's like, well, where was that? Where was that? Good. Yeah. Like, I, I would be incredibly rich or famous or, like, in a supermax prison if I'd had access to stuff like that. <laughs> One or the other. There wouldn't be any middle ground in there. Um... So, teach an old pie new tricks, deep learning, Santa, not Santa detector. That's what we got, man. I mean, this is taking a pie, setting it up, and uh, teaching it what is Santa and what is not. There's a full part list kit. Something fun for the project. I don't know if you got enough days left to go here. Let me full screen that so everybody can see what's going on. 
and uh, mm-hmm. it's all under the guise of uh, oh, they even have a nice little tree there. They're showing mm-hmm. that it's doing things, but you're teaching it, and it's a small project, a fun little project, uh, t- not terribly useful, you know, because I personally believe this is all well and good, but part two didn't include motion tracking guns. So, <laughs> or uh, the guns, let's, for the sake of family friendliness, that gun shoots uh, milk and cookies. Directly at Santa's mouth. Made out of bullets, <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I, but yeah, it's uh, it's another one of these awesome projects that just takes image recognition and does something seasonal with it. Let's go with that. Because uh, it's Christmas. You can see the Christmas tree behind me there. So yeah, let's uh, find or create a camera. Uh, from your Raspberry Pi that can detect whether or not what you're looking at is Santa. Because you have that um, it's like that thing that your brain isn't wired correctly and you can't recognize like whatever. There's a a condition that has a name and uh, you can't really recognize patterns in the same way that most people do. It's called alcohol. I knew the name of that. It's called alcohol, (laughs) Pedro. I actually knew the name of that because uh, one of my coworkers uh, has it. So it's, uh, I can't, I can't remember. Hairspray? <laughs> no, <laughs> couldn't remember that either. <laughs> That's just fun. I just wanted to put that in there because I thought somebody might get a kick out of it, and um, it's pretty neat. But if you know something cool, we should play with ideas and uh, suggestions because. Hey, we're only like one year into this, and we're just getting mm-hmm. started, and uh, kind of need your help. And that's the thing. So, how can they do it, Pedro? And just head over to our Linux Gamecast, right? Indeed, LinuxGamecast.com will give you all the necessary bits that you need to find where we are, including the contact form, which if you pick LWDW from the little drop down menu, just fill in the form and it'll be sent directly to this show's feedback section. Uh, Chances are, if it's something a bit more pertinent, we'll get back to you right then and there. But if it is something interesting or you're actively calling us out on some... um, let's say inaccuracies, what we may have said, mostly me, uh, we will be more than happy to feature right here, right now. And, well, someone did. Because last week we were talking about uh, React, uh, React OS. Oh, man, somebody straight up XKCD did us on this one, didn't they? Yep. Like, uh, <laughs> uh, which is awesome because with some of our favorite bits of feedback, I mean, like, if you're interested in you leave comments on the tubes, That works. Hit Mm -hmm. us on Twitter, but just keep in mind the best way to do it is through the contact form. That way we we can't guarantee you. But, I mean, we read everything. And if it's good enough, it goes on the show. We just don't want to miss it. That's why we ask you to do that. But, um, yeah, this one, um, being nice, I'm not taking any offense to whatever. I don't want to. I don't want you know, Jesus, all right, I'm starting something out with an apology, Pedro. I'm probably about not to be really nice. Um, <laughs> what are you about to do? <laughs> no, I'm just saying this is one of those bits of feedback that starts out with an IRL. Well, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and uh, Das Gaga tier. Mm. I, I don't know if that's how you say it, but uh, he says, uh, or she says, or whatever. Uh, React OS started uh, not in the Vista days, like I said, but much earlier. Its earliest iteration was called FreeWin95, I do remember that name, and started in 1996. Version 0.9.11 came out in 1998, and version 0.1.0 in 2003. So it did not start out as a retro project, which willy-nilly it has become over time, but as an effort to replicate a current production OS, just as GNU and Linux did with Unix. Minixed. But yeah. Oh, 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 hang on. Don't you mean, well, actually? <laughs> I didn't want to do that. <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying. Listen, man, 100%, I agree with you. I didn't know the history behind. I always like learning new stuff. I love being proved mm-hmm. wrong. But, son, you did not stick that landing. 
I hate to break that. <laughs> nope, no, you didn't. <laughs> Minix. Just saying. It's Minix. And then I get in arguments with Jordan. He's like, but Minix was based on BSD. And I was like, well, BSD was based on Bell Labs Unix. It's still a derivative. And derivative of a derivative of yeah, a right. derivative. Yeah, yes. it's, that's, why, that's why we use the apostrophe X, right? So. Yes. <laughs> that's definitely a thing. But hey, man, thanks for the feedback with that. I mean, that's interesting to know. I never had any experience with CentOS. Not CentOS. What am I thinking? Mm-hmm. React OS. What am I thinking? CentOS. BIOS or uh, React OS. Okay. <laughs> I, I, My brain went everywhere with that one. <laughs> I'm sure somebody could turn that into a haiku. What I did there. Um, hey, everyone. It's been fun. It's been real. Sorry for the technical troubles for our live audience. We will dig into that, but not severely because it really does sound like YouTube's being derpy. Then again, we are doing mm-hmm. all this on Linux and uh, sometimes things go weird. This could be one of those uh, reboard situations where it's like, okay, that, yeah. that was the thing that happened. Plus our audio system is going to get really complex because we got some big plans. And uh, thanks again for everyone. For backing this, because it's time for the credits. Maybe. Ooh, yes. <laughs> there it is. And yeah, this is. Uh, this wasn't. It didn't really catch as much fire as it usually does when we're starting the show. Uh, executive producers, look at them. Well, the well, listen, man, you might not think it's fire, but what's wrong right now is there's crackling in audio and me with audio, so yeah, you might as well have a red-hot poker mm-hmm. on my yeah. team. <laughs> it's, it's killing me. <laughs> audio is my thing. It remains to be seen if it's uh, actually just for the live streaming. No, I've already tested it. A little bit it. of it. Yeah. 97. Coming in on two years. 